All right, had to re-record this because my dumbass hasn't made a video like this in a long time, so I tried to record it ver vertical. Obviously, that looked like shit. Um, so this is the baby Prasinus enclosure. Both of them are sleeping right in here. Let's see if I can get it to show them. There they are. But yeah, so this is two foot long, foot and a half deep, three foot tall, uh, cork flats, spray foamed in, silicone, and then sphagnum moss, you know, the usual. Um, one thing that I like to do with these is to, you know, stand some pieces upright to use as bastion spots, stuff like this. Um, just in the pr process of foaming, it makes it look better, add some depth to it. And then foamed in this guy. That's breaking off. And then a couple other branches. Got kind of a hide looking one down here. They don't really use that one too often. They stay basically this hide and up. I'm happy that they're starting to use this now though. Uh, made a little mess of their water. But yeah, I keep a water bowl there. I hand mist them every day works really well now, let's see if I can wiggle some of them out why are you being so weird see as soon as they smell me they calm down super easy going like any other monitor it can be very social if you poke them out of their hide they're not going to like it too much Yeah, really blue. These are Saran locale. Both of the parents are. So all the babies come out just like this. And here's the other one. Yep, they're great. Uh, they're a little over 10 days old. So they're starting to eat. Primarily grasshoppers. They're both eating right out of my hand. Doing really good. But I will show you the adult enclosure. So the male's not currently in with her because she's actually once again gravid. And my blue trees out was feeding her a few minutes ago. She's right here. She's super good looking too. She's about two years old. She's a little flighty still, but she doesn't dart too often. Thankfully, uh, I've had her for about a month and a half. She's getting to the point where she'll tone feed, which is really cool. So I'm using that as a way to kind of bridge the gap to socialize her. So I'll just stand here and feed her everything that she eats. I try to not um, fill her food bowl anymore. I just crammed one of these in here and put doobie on it. I try to not do that too often anymore so that I have more excuse to work with her. But see, she's just out moving. She doesn't really care too much. It's really nice. And then the prize enclosure. So like I said, the male's not in with her. She's gravid. Um, I have a couple spots in here that I need to fix up. So like my other enclosures, um, spray foam, silicone dirt, all that. This spot in particular is where they breed and eat basically every day. So they claw at this spot a lot. Like the male will claw at her back legs while breeding and stuff. So... This spot in particular has a lot of wear and tear. The rest of it, not so much, but you can see. Let's see if I zoom it out. And here's the blue tree. So this is four and a half by two and a half by four and a half about. And then this is four by two by six. But I like this one a lot. There was a plant in this little hole here and uh, yeah, uh, didn't water it enough, it died. So now I just have a hole there. So after she lays these eggs, I'm gonna pull her out and fix some of this stuff. But this is her lay bin. Um, you can see I placed it about a foot below the basking spot. Um, what you're shooting for is, you know, 83 to 86, 87 
for a lay spot, preferably 86 at the highest. Uh, so I really just took a temp gun, got one next to me. It's gonna be a little colder since the door's been open, but so here it's saying, you know, 87. It's a little bit colder than that. But so with the heat being up here, it simulates what actually happens in nature. So the farther they dig down, the colder it gets. So let's say she wants it at 83, 84. She might dig to about here. If she wants it like 82, she'll dig down farther. And then that's how she can thermoregulate to, I mean, pick where she lays her eggs. Um, but yeah, it's just a cork tube with a garden liner attached to the bottom. She's right there, obviously. And uh, garden liner hot glued on. It's a sand and um, cocoa mix. About 60-40 cocoa to sand. And let's see if I can kick the light on. She hasn't dug too deep yet. It looks pretty dry on the top, but as she digs in it, it's it's still really hydrated down there. But we got another five days, so I might hit the top of this with some water uh, just to be safe. Let me see if I can at least grab her out a little bit. So she's super social, so she doesn't give a fuck about anything that I try to do with her except for right now so she's not super happy about leaving this area um, what you'll notice is she's hanging out she's really really round right now but she will hang out on that ledge and just this spot horizontally across and as you can guess she's doing that because it's the same temperature as where I put this so she's trying to keep her body temperature while the eggs are inside of her at about, you know, that 84 degrees. So she's going to hang out in this spot basically all day until she lays. Um, got about a week left at this point. Uh, noticed breeding on, I think, the 29th or 28th. And it's the 18th now. Got about a week, maybe 7 to 10 days before she lays and she's already huge so I'm expecting this to be her biggest clutch yet um but yeah she's going really consistent she laid three months ago uh it'll be actually it'll be basically three months when she lays these so less than two months uh between laying and then copulating again and I didn't induce any of that that was just all on her own but yeah, kind of fingers crossed, making sure she's staying healthy. Typically, she only lays two to three eggs at a time. The one time she laid four, one was infertile. Um, she doesn't lay a huge clutch, so she can go more often. I suspect if um, this clutch is as big as I think it'll be, I'm expecting, with her size and it being this soon, um, I'm expecting five or six eggs obviously we'll see but yeah you can see she's nice and social she's really good usually she, she's just at the glass all day trying to get out but yeah just that time where she's trying to take it easy but uh play it safe you know um she knows what she's doing obviously uh, especially with this her this being her like fourth or fifth clutch now um, we have three more in the incubator those two hatched and then however many she's gonna lay now so I'm expecting a pretty fucking good year out of her and then our green tree pythons are locking right now too so pretty exciting um, but yeah any any questions about like monitor breeding stuff especially with the tree monitors uh, shoot me a message leave a comment or something and I'll help out how I can I really really like this breeding option it's not on the bottom in a dark area that you need to supplement heat to it uses the natural heat of the enclosure and allows her to dig into it and this is the tried and true method that she even likes every time I put this in here she at least takes a couple inches off digging into it um, we've tried normal nesting options with her. She just doesn't take to it.
but yeah, um, I'll definitely be updating on what's going on. I'm trying to be more consistent. I have been wanting to do videos like this for quite some time and never do because my phone would never connect to my computer. And, uh, I really don't like the idea of transferring, uh, like five gigabyte videos to my computer over Wi-Fi. So got it sorted though. So yeah, um, keep an eye out though. I'll be posting when she lays.